Hey, what's up everyone? This is Vegetarian Zombie and I want to welcome you back to Beginning C Sharp with Unity. In this video, we're going to be covering the for each loop. But before we dive into that, let's look at your last assignment from the last video. In the last video, I gave you the assignment of creating an array of strings that you would add in the Unity Inspector. And then what I wanted you to do is to loop through those strings and append them to one giant string and then print them out. Let's see how we can do this now. Okay, here I have my hello script, and this is where we last left off. We're going to keep the scores. We're still going to be working on this, and we're going to create an array of names, just like this. And we'll call it names like so. And now I'm going to switch back to Unity here, and we'll shut off this script that was still running. We'll close the scores, and you can see we have names right here. I'm going to add three names, and we'll just add them below. Here we have Fred, Mike, and Sam. Now we want to iterate through all of them and print them out. The way we're going to do this is we're going to use a for loop. So we're going to create a for loop here, and we're going to define our iterator. This is going to be called i, int i equals 0. And we're going to loop through the amount of names. So we're going to do names dot length, like so. And then we'll do i plus plus. Now, if you want, you could also do i plus equals one, like so. Or you could even do i equals i plus one, like that. All those are valid. But most of the time, you'll see it written like this. OK, now let's add them to our name. So let's create a new variable here. We'll call existing names, like so. Now we'll simply add to the existing names plus we'll do a plus equals and then we'll do names and we'll pass in the i variable like that and I'm going to add a space if I don't add the space they're all going to be con concocted together and it's just going to be one long string of names and for our print out we'll just simply existing names like so and we'll just print out the names like that gotta love mono de develop and it's auto completion and to keep the logs clean, I'm going to comment this out. So this won't run now. All right, let's switch back to Unity. And if we play this, I'm going to select my scene tab, select my cube. Here's our names. I'm going to disable this cube. And we have existing name string lang dot string. OK, let's come back here. Evidently, I forgot to put my existing name. So I'm going to copy this and paste that like so. OK, let's switch back here. We'll stop this, run it again, and now let's disable our cube. And presto, existing names, Fred, Mike, and Sam. OK, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the for each loop. So far, we've worked with the for loop. And the for loop is great for iterating a certain amount of times. The for each loop is specific for iterating through collections. Let's say we wanted to access these names, or in our last example, we wanted to get the average of something. What we did here, you'll see, is that we grabbed a score from the array and then we added it. The for each loop does this for us, but what it also does is it gives us some type safety. And I'll be talking about type safety in later videos, especially when we're talking about collections. You may have an array of various different objects. And what happens is you could grab an object from an array, but it may not be exactly what you think it is. It could say if it's a if it's an array that can contain many different types, you could say grab a string when in fact you're looking for an int. And if you do any operations on that string, you're going to get an error. The for each loop will make sure that everything is of the same type and then you don't have to worry about anything else. The for each loop also grabs the current element of the for loop. You don't have to worry about grabbing it yourself. It's already provided to you. The way this works is you would just put for each. In your parentheses, you're then going to put the type of each element of the array and you're going to give it a name. Then you'll use the keyword in because you're getting each object within that collection. And after the keyword, you're going to then put a variable that references that collection. 
So right here, let's say we have movie titles. We have A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. This first we would have a string represent the title, and we would get that from the movie's collection. Then you put in your opening brace and a closing brace. Then within those braces, you'll put your code that will run each time the loop iterates. Now the loop will iterate throughout the entire collection. So in our case, it will iterate through those three movie titles. And at the very end of the third movie title, it will stop the loop. In this case, you don't have to worry about keeping tracks of the current integer and so forth. The for each loop does it all for you. Now there's going to be times when you do want to keep track of that information. For instance, you need to know what element of the loop we're in. Unfortunately, the for each loop doesn't contain that right very easily. There's a lot of ways for you to get that information and it can be a little bit complex. For me, the easiest way to do that is simply create an integer before the loop and then then increment that integer during every time of the of that loop. Again, it's a little more work on your on your part, but it makes it easier to understand what's going on and you don't have to worry about performance issues or anything like that. Now what we're going to do is convert our for loop into a for each loop. Now first thing I'm going to do is comment out this existing names like so. And I can do that by selecting everything. And I'm working on a Mac right now. And if I hit command forward slash, and you can see that completely comments it out. If you're on Windows, I'm guessing that would be control forward slash. And for this, I can do the same control forward slash again, and you'll see, or command forward slash again, and you can see that's uncommented. Okay, let's create our for each loop. The way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna type for each, like so. And then within this, I'm going to create a variable called score, and this is gonna be a type of int. And then I'm gonna use the keyword in. So for each score variable, for each score within the collection of scores, like that. And then what I can do is just simply do average equals average, plus score. And now we can delete this and this will work as exactly as before. Now I'm going to return back to Unity. We're going to stop this. We're going to, let's clear our console and let's play again. Okay, I'm going to return back to the scene. I have my cube selected and I'm going to, going to deselect the cube and you can see the average is 20. Basically, this is working the exact same way as the for loop, but it's much easier to read and much simpler to see and much simpler to write out. And again, if I wanted to keep track of each increment of this loop, I could create, say, another variable called increment, and we'll set that to zero, and then I could do something like this, increment, plus equals three, plus equals one, excuse me. And then we'll just print out this value. Like so, the loop repeated increment times. We'll return back to Unity. I'll start and stop my game again. We'll select my cube and we'll dis disable the cube and you can see the loop repeated four times. And the reason for that, of course, is we have four scores within our loop. Okay, for your assignment in this video, I want you to take this code here and I want you to change it so that it uses the for each loop instead of using the for loop. Just simply follow the example that I used in this video and that should get you started. All right, well, that's the end of this video tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you like the content, just give me a thumbs up. I'd certainly appreciate it. Okay, in the next video, we're going to dive into do while loops and while loops. And those will be the last loops and, of course, the last video in this section. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. See you then.